Pete, we heard yesterday that David Miliband has now stepped down. Do you think that will help his brother? Not necessarily, because on the one hand, it seems like quite a magnanimous uh, action by David in the sense that he's going to uh, step aside, let everyone focus on Ed, and everyone's not therefore concentrating on it every word that David Miliband says, every raised eyebrow, every slight scowl or whatever. On the other hand, I'm not quite so sure. I think Ed Miliband would rather have David Miliband in the shadow cabinet, uh, under the collective responsibility of that cabinet and being quite a, a force in the attacking of the Conservative Party going on. As it is, David Miliband on the back benches has more freedom rather than less freedom uh, to criticise his brother if needs be and, and therefore th this whole action has already brought up issues of rifts between them and it could possibly be that David Miliband is a focus for opposition to Miliband um, later on. So consequently it's not necessarily as good as it might first appear to be for Ed Miliband. Overall would you say it's been a good week for the Labour Party? I think it has been quite a good week for the Labour Party for a variety of reasons on the, the one simplistic, and they've now got a leader. If you look at how well the Labour Party are doing in the polls without a leader, they're doing quite well against the coalition government. Now they have a leader, they have a direction and a focus, uh, and that's good for them. And second of all, they've been the focus of all media attention. Uh, uh, you know, they, People haven't been focusing on the coalition uh, for the last week. So I think the Labour Party will be quite happy with the way the conference has gone. The Conservative Party are meeting next week. What do you think they need to do to top this? I'm not sure that they can top it. I think that the Conservative Party conference this year is going to serve a different function to the Labour Party conference. I mean, the Labour Party had this focal activity of the new, um, the new party leader, and as a consequence, any sort of discussion, any divisions within the party were subsumed into that debate. The Conservative Party have a slightly different agenda. There'll be people going to the conference who are jubilant that the Conservative Party are in power, you know, for the first time since 1997, there will be other members who are perhaps slightly less satisfied about David Cameron's very narrow sort of creep over the, the victory line and the need to bring in the Liberal Democrats into the coalition. So, um, so Cameron is not without his critics within the Labour Party, despite, uh, within the Conservative Party, sorry, despite the fact um, that he's Prime Minister at the moment. So what does David Cameron need to do next week? I think the Conservative Party conference will be expecting him to act prime ministerially. This is the thing, they, they look for different things from a leader of the opposition to a prime minister. And they'll expect him to be a statesman, uh, to be talking about the comprehensive spending reviews coming up. Uh, and so that they'll be expecting a certain sort of image from him as well. And I suspect that if he achieves that and pulls that off, then he might be able to silence some of his critics within the party who are critical about the fact that he didn't win the general election outright.